Hi. Recently, NerdKids was a sponsor for MIT's annual battle of bands held during campus preview weekend for incoming students. Since we don't like to miss any opportunities to build something cool here at NerdKids, we decided to build a little demo for the event. We wanted to have something that would be simple, interesting, show off the capabilities of microcontrollers, and be relevant to MIT and to the Battle of the Bands theme. Our team of engineers decided to make a sound meter that we could hang on the wall and would in some way represent the overall sound level in the room. Here's what we came up with. A keen observer will notice that the display looked an awful lot like the LED marquee that we featured in an earlier video, and indeed, it was the exact same display. In fact, the code was even simpler, since it only had to display predefined bars and predefined text. The real trick to this project was measuring the sound level in a room without a complicated microphone setup. And the answer to that starts with a part that's included in every single nerd kit, the piezoelectric buzzer. The piezoelectric buzzer can not, only be, can not only be driven with a voltage to create a sound, but it also responds to a sound input with a voltage. This voltage is what we measure. The voltage created by the buzzer is very small, way too small to read just using the ADC on the microcontroller. However, we can use a single transistor amplifier to amplify the signal. Because we don't like to leave anything unexplained here at NerdKits, I'm going to go over the basics of the single transistor amplifier we used. If you've never done analog circuits before, it might be a bit complicated, so get ready. Okay, so we have this little guy, which is a bipolar junction transistor, which is one of what we want to make our amplifier out of. And the first thing we need to do is build a mathematical model of how this guy works, so we can make, it, so we can make a circuit out of it. So, let's build that mathematical model. This is the way we draw the schematic or the bipolar junction transistor, and it has three terminals. It has a collector, an emitter, and a base. And we also define three currents. The current going into the base, the current going into the collector, and the current coming out of the emitter. And there's also some equations that govern how these currents and voltages interact with each other. The most important ones are the following. The collector current is always going to be the base current times beta. And for these bipolar junction transistors, beta is greater than 100. Which basically this means that the collector current is a lot more than the base current. There is also another equation that says that the base current is IS, some number, that's a constant, times E to the VBE over VTH minus 1. VBE is the voltage difference between the base and the emitter. IS is a constant, VTH is a constant. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's an exponential relationship between VBE, the voltage difference between the base and the emitter, and the current IB. Now why is that important? Well, that's important because if we were to be at a point where VBE is some number, let's call that 0.6, That'll be important later. If we were to start off there, then for a huge range of useful IBs, a very big range of currents, VBE only has to change by a little bit for us to get this huge range of useful IBs. You don't know why that's important yet, but it will be. And there's one more equation that I'm going to write down for you. 
I E is I C plus I B. This one's not that hard to see where it comes from because this current is just kind of these two currents added up. That's just Kirchhoff's current law saying that current or charge can't add up inside this uh, little device. So let's use this model and these three equations to sort of see how we can get an amplifier out of it. In order to do that, I'm going to add some resistors. I'm going to add two resistors to our circuit, and I'm going to call this RC, and I'm going to call this RE. Now, we added these resistors, so we have control over what the resistances are. We're going to also, I'm going to also gonna define two nodes. I'm going to call this voltage VE, the voltage at the emitter, and this voltage VB, the voltage at the base. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that VBE was something that we need, some number. That would mean that we have some current, IB, coming into the base, which means that we have some current, IC, coming into the collector, which defines an IE coming out of, coming out of the emitter, which tells us what VE is, because V equals IR. And we know R, and we know IE. So we have VE equals RE times IE, which is completely defined, assuming that VBE equals some number. So before we move on, there's one more thing that I need to convince you of. Let's see how these currents are actually related to each other. Uh, we know for a fact that IE equals IC plus IB. That is absolutely true. We also know that IC is a hundred times or more IB. So that means that if IC was 100, IB was just 1, which means that IE is 101. So IB is really just one hundredth of whatever IC is. IB is really small compared to IC, so we can approximate IE to be about the same as IC. It's not exactly true, but it's close enough, and yeah, it's close enough. Um, okay, so if we can say that IE is approximately the same as IC, then we can start wiggling these voltages and seeing what happens. So say, for example, that I put a delta VB. I changed VB by just a little bit. Well, I already managed to convince you that VBE stays approximately the same. So if I change VB by some amount, VE is going to change by just about the same amount. So I make a VB, and I get a delta VE. Well, since V equals IR, and that's always true, um, changing this delta in VE causes a delta in IE. Well, I just convinced you that IE is about the same as IC. So, by changing this VB, I change this VE, which changed the IE, and now I get a change in IC. Well, what did that do to this voltage here that I'm going to call VC? the voltage at the collector. Well, a change in IC, which is the current coming down through this resistor, is going to cause a negative change in VC times whatever RC is. Okay, so what else do we know? Well, we know that IE is approximately the same as IC. So if I divide in this equation both sides by RE, then I get a delta VE over RE equals IE, which is the same as IC. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that into this IC, and I get a delta VC 